you're dealing with anymore after the past couple of you know dry spells in the last 10, 12 years. People need to make sure they got a reliable source of water. Yeah, uh, still a lot of ponds though. We still got a lot of ponds with irrigation, not, not direct stream controls. A piece that we're facing, I don't know if the amount of blood they can bring that here back to the understanding of the they are somewhere on the average age of municipal structure that have to do with water and sewer and their age. Tremendous problem. That is where in the crunch of it. And there's no funding anticipated to deal with the aging. So the issues of leaks and infusion, you know, all of it into our sewer system is going to be there. And I'm not sure it's not some way it's not should bring out that's a huge issue. Yeah. It's funny you mention that. I just uh, that reminded me of something about the mainland. I just emailed my utilities guy because I was curious when I mean, Fitzgerald has the highest water use per capita of any town in the region. And it's gotta be those kind of issues yes. out there. That, and that's all over. That's not <coughs> the municipal association is a huge issue that's not built in because uh, you know the indirect the cost for overhead is not built in to any of the planning in the cities. So those were aging same time, we got other issues that we're trying to deal with these kind of development at the same time, by the demand for agriculture. So all those trajectories are well, how does it, it capture it. How does the Municipal Association, I mean, how do they think that needs to be approached? I mean, should the rate payers be paying for future, well, for, for a retro, retrofit? Yeah, or that's they? one thing that needs to move to the basics of what they have a lot of times in the municipality. You know, the average home, if you're using an automobile or something you've got to anticipate, uh, those costs are just part of what you're doing in the budget. And it can't, it really, if you need to move more and more to enterprise funds for water and sewer and those things, where well, it's by the customer and has to be in rather than being in the tax base. Right. And so all of that's catching up. Off that, but meantime, we're running into crisis issues because the age of those things are way past. Most municipalities have not built that in. Right. And I think that's one thing that with the required water audits, that a lot of people are learning that they're losing a lot more than they thought they were. And if you look at it in terms of lost revenue, in addition to lost water, Comes a whole, you know, folks are seeing it in a whole different way. Um, the new audit is definitely putting a whole new light on how we look at this. Um, it's um, the aging infrastructure issue is, is huge. Um, those that have kept up, it's, it's water rates. And the problem is, most of you guys, but officials don't want to raise the rates, but. Put it off the next Honey, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we were just talking about yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. We were just discussing a successful a success story for a case study of someone that has up their rates and, and how they handled it. Um, but that is one of the biggest problems when I'm working with communities and hearing a, a uniform rate, they don't have a base rate, they don't include you know the actual infrastructure um, of maintaining it. It's it, it's it's a problem. It might be. We have not, you know, has not, we have not funded depreciation. Right. So it's on, and you, you know, you, people don't stay in the office if they catch up too quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so all of that is developing and it's being delayed, delayed. And, and I, I bet and that's going to be one of those things that when the next round of water planning comes up, when these plans are updated, that there's a lot more, because we'll have a couple of years of water audit. But you people will think about addressing it. But it's still, you know, often it's 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 a delayed response because it doesn't matter how much you come to that you have, if the funding's not there. Well, the other side of the, of the coin is that the ratepayers understand 
Right now, the rate, the way the rate structure is, the usage pays for the infrastructure. So if you cut back on usage, that means the rate goes up. Because how do you pay for the infrastructure? If, if my home is using half the water it used to use, I mean, you've got to charge me more for the water because the infrastructure price has changed. Yeah, and that's basically where we're going with it, where those have not been set, you know, totally set to be. I know that it, 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 the end of the water sewer part is totally set. Right. into the property tax base now. We've got to pull it totally out of the people who use it pay for it. Right. And some people have chosen a route of, if they know they're going to have a lot of development, they'll do the town property. But they're going to um, upgrade the development and they'll use the town property. Up those, the connection fees, to help yeah. offset what that's going to do to their infrastructure. It's a balance. It really well, is. One of the things you did is, is actually have one base to, you know, set up a place like where to have new development because if you don't do that and build it in people who already have known keep paying for the new development. So what we did was set up a basic specific fee so if you want to extend water into a new subdivision, you have a base cost that's an add-on so you pay for that new infrastructure from that new development. Maybe from the plan standpoint, Lee, at some point we need to have have an opinion, I guess, on what, what strategy, we need to figure out what strategies work and, and have an opinion in the plan on how we think we can help this, this stuff. Because here's, here's the thing, I mean, what, that's one of the reasons why tax allocation is for reform. And I bet you there's not a, there, I bet you there's maybe one of those in the whole region. You know, the, our small regions aren't going to, aren't going to be implementing the things to help solve some of these problems. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where we fit into that. That's that's a discussion for a later time, I guess. But um, I definitely think it's something for us to, to, to look into and discuss. Uh, well, one of the things, guys, and, and this this is the first thing that comes to mind. We look at our region, and we look at 194 million gallons a day. And uh, when you start talking about water usage of 75% or 90% of those kind of things, you think, well, that's a lot. But 194 million gallons a day is not a lot, considering that uh, Jacksonville alone is using 300 million gallons a day. So what happens in our region is the, the usage is not so much that people solve the problem proactively. We want to wait until we get the problems that you're talking about until the infrastructure starts to cave yeah. in, and then you try to backfill, if you will. So. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe maybe one of the things that this this council can do is, is see what's working in the places where there is high usage and maybe be proactive in suggesting that to our to our big people to be. I think that's the point that we capture these competing needs and how uh, uh, escalated they are. Yes. Yeah, we have a huge agricultural demand that's there and that's such a base point we gotta support that. Right. But at the same time, you got the municipalities uh, that have a very aging uh, already behind. And then you've got, you really need a conference plan and a way to deliver as much information as possible for so that you do it in a comprehensive manner. I guess that's the point. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Well, I think we've 